In this video, I'm going to begin our discussion of one of the foundational ideas behind calculus, which is the idea of limits. So we're just going to do an overview, we're going to talk about some of the general concepts, and then we're going to be getting into more of the details, and we'll talk about the questions that we're going to be answering at the end of the video. So calculus is a tool that we can use to understand functions. So when we think about the tools that we already have for understanding functions, when we think about we want an overall view of a function, uh, these are the kinds of questions we're asking. We might be asking, what's happening to the population of fish in a lake? Uh, how is the cost of healthcare changing over time? How do changes in the demand of a product affect the price of that product? These are all general questions that involve understanding a function. So in the first example, the population is the variable that depends on time, or maybe it depends on the pollution level, or it depends on perhaps several of those factors. In the second one, we have healthcare. The cost of healthcare is our variable that depends on the time variable. And then in the third one, we have demand and price affecting each other. So when we want to try to understand these functions, we can often do so graphically, right? We want to plot points, we want to plug values in and understand what's going on with this function. So let's start with a much simpler example. Let's start with just f of x equals x squared. So you probably already know a lot about this function, but if you were just getting started and you'd never seen this function before and you wanted to try to understand it, what you might do is you might try plugging in a value. So for example, maybe you try plugging in two and you see that the answer is four. And so on your graph, you're plotting the point two comma four. Now that one point all by itself doesn't really tell you much. So if you wanna know more about this function, you would plot more points. Plot some more points, you start seeing a shape, plot enough points, and you start being able to connect those dots and get a full graph of what this function might look like. Again, it's not the full graph because these two pieces of my function go up and up and up forever. But again, it's giving us a much better visualization, a visual sense of what this function looks like. So sometimes though, we don't really care about the entire function. We're just interested in one particular point on our function. To go back to the examples that we talked about before, maybe I wanna know what was the population of the fish in the lake last year. I don't care what, how it changes over time or how it changes based on different variables. I just wanna know what was it last year? Or I might wanna know what's the cost of healthcare right now? And again, I don't care what it was 10 years ago or five years ago, I just wanna know what it is right now. Maybe that's what I wanna know. Or what's the price of this product when we're demanded 100 units? So in these examples, it seems like all we need to do is just plug one variable in our function. We don't need to plot lots of points. We just need to up a single point, just what we get when we plug that one number into our single function. But sometimes what happens is when we try to do that, it doesn't work. So here's an example of a function, kind of complicated looking function, but if we try to plug in x equals three, what we find is that we can't do that. And specifically the problem here is the bottom of this fraction, the denominator. Because if I look at three squared minus three times three, that's gonna be zero and we can't divide by zero. And so that would mean that f of three is undefined. So we can't figure out what's going on with this function when x equals three just by trying to plug in three because it doesn't work. So we sort of have two ways we can go from here. We could just shrug our shoulders and say, well, I don't know, I tried plugging in, didn't work, so go on with my life and just you know, live without knowing the answer to my question. But we're mathematicians, right? We wanna to try to see if we can attack this problem and figure out this problem in a different way. And so the different way we're gonna to try to attack this problem is to say, well, you know what? I don't know what f of three is. f of three is undefined. So if I can't figure out what's happening at three, then maybe I can at least get a sense of what's going on by figuring out what's happening near three. So plugging in exactly three doesn't work. But if I plug in numbers that are close to three and a little bit below three, so these numbers are close to three and below three, these numbers are close to three and above three, and essentially what I'm doing is I'm zooming in on three. The closer I get to three, the better sense I'll get as to what's happening at three. So when we do that, we get our calculators, we plug those numbers into our, our function. I did that work for you, so save you the trouble. What we're seeing is that these numbers, as I get closer to three, so as x gets close to three, both from above and below, what I'm seeing with these numbers is that they're actually pretty close to negative four, right? Negative 4.001, negative 3.998, those are numbers that are very close to the number negative four. And if we graph this function, what we see is that at x equals three, 
there's no actual function at this point. There's no function at 3 comma negative 4. But everywhere else nearby, as x goes to 3, so these values here correspond to these values, the values that are close to 3 but less than 3. These values here correspond to these values, the values that are close to 3 and greater than 3. And as I plug these values into my function, what I find is that my y values get closer and closer to negative 4. And so I have what we call a hole at the point 3 comma negative 4. And the way that we describe this is we, again, we can't say that f of 3 equals negative 4. f of 3 does definitely not equal negative 4. f of 3 is undefined. If I try to plug in 3, I end up dividing by 0. I can't divide by 0, so that's not what I get. So f of 3, completely undefined. But what we say is that the limit of my function as x approaches 3 is equal to negative 4. Let me say that again. We can't say that f of 3 equals negative 4 because it doesn't. f of 3 is not defined. f of 3 does not exist. But as x gets closer and closer to 3, the value of f gets closer and closer to negative 4. And so we say that the limit, so there's, there's this new word that we're defining here, limit, the limit of the function is equal to negative 4. The function isn't equal to negative 4, but the limit of the function is negative 4. So informally, what that means is what I was just saying before. As x gets closer and closer to 3, f of x is getting closer and closer to negative 4. Now, I say that that's not exactly going to be the definition that we're going to have down the road, but for now, it's fine, right? So for now, don't worry about the fact that this is a sort of a loosey-goosey, informal definition. We're going to tighten up that definition and really understand what this means a little later on in our study of limits. But for right now, what this means is that as x gets closer to 3, f of x gets closer to negative 4. That's what that notation means. Okay, so we've seen an example where we had our function, we tried plugging in, it didn't work, we plugged in numbers that were close by, those numbers were getting closer and closer to something, and the graph had a hole. But that's not the only thing that can happen. It turns out that limits can turn out a lot of different ways. So let's look at a couple more examples so we can see what some of the possibilities are. So here's an example, f of x is x times the cosine of x divided by x minus pi, and I want to look at the limit as x approaches pi of f of x. So again, what I'm doing is I'm making a table of values. If I try to plug in pi exactly, my function is undefined, so I can't do that. So instead what I'm doing is plugging in numbers that are close to pi and less than pi. And the farther down this list I go, the closer those numbers get to pi. So notice that 3.1 is pretty close to pi, but 3.14 is closer. 3.141 is even closer, but always less than. And then on the other side of my chart, these numbers are close to pi, but greater than pi. So 3.2, pretty close to pi and bigger than pi. 3.15 is even closer. 3.14 2 is even closer, and so on. And I could fill in those dot, dot, dots, right? I could, I could keep zooming in if I wasn't getting enough information. So it doesn't have to be 3. It doesn't have to be exactly one decimal place, two decimal places, three decimal places. You can kind of fit uh, your numbers to whatever situation you're in. But what I'm seeing is that my y values, 74, 1,971, 5,300, those numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so what I'm seeing in my graph is that my y values are shooting up through the roof. On the other hand, as my x values get closer to pi from the other side, negative 54.6, negative 374, negative 77 of 13, what I'm seeing is that my y values are shooting down into the basement. And so what we have is what we call an asymptote. So this dotted line here is called an asymptote. And what that means is that the graph of the function is getting closer and closer and closer to that line, in this case, a vertical line a vertical asymptote. We're going to talk more about asymptotes later in this section, in this chapter, but for now, just want you to see an example of it. Okay, so that's another thing that can happen with limits. Here's another example. f of x is sine of 1 over x, and I want to know the limit as x goes to 0. So again, the top half of my chart is numbers that are close to 0 and less than 0. And the numbers on the other side of my chart are close to zero. Everything I'm plugging in is going to be close to zero, close to zero, and greater than zero. And what I'm seeing is that I'm not actually seeing 
distinct pattern. So I get 0 0.544, 0 0.506, negative 0.82, and if I keep plugging in numbers that are getting closer and closer to zero, they're just gonna keep bouncing around. I'm not gonna see any pattern. And the same thing is gonna happen from the other end. They're just gonna keep bouncing around and nothing really, no pattern is really gonna emerge. And what I'm seeing in the graph is that my function value wiggles back and forth faster and faster and faster. So it kind of goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up and goes down, up and down, up and down, wiggles back and forth and it never zooms in, it never settles in on anything. So that's just another thing that can happen when we talk about limits. So, so kind of a lot of different possibilities, a lot of different things can happen. And so, uh, you know, we just have to sort of be aware of these situations. And like I said, we're going to learn more about how to analyze these things as we go forward. So right now it's just about kind of seeing some of the things that can happen. Okay, so here are the questions that we still have to answer. And we're gonna answer these as we go through this chapter. We're gonna be talking about this stuff for, for several different days. So the first question is, how do we determine whether or not this limit exists? How do we determine whether or not this limit is even equal to a number? And when it does exist, what is that number, right? So sometimes we might be able to figure out that there is a number, but we might not be sure what that number is. And then the last question is, even when the limit doesn't exist, can we narrow down the behavior? Can we figure out whether there's an asymptote or whether it's this sort of un uncontrolled wiggling or, or, or something, right? Is there some way that we can figure out what behavior the function has, even when the limit doesn't actually equal the number? So it seems like a lot, but hopefully this video helps break it down and help you understand what it is that we're going to be talking about in our study of limits. Have a great day.